the parents across Leicester and Leicestershire this week, of course, are gearing up to send their children back to school in the coming, well, days, I suppose. Appealing directly to parents, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson says it's vitally important to send them back to school. Echoing England's chief medical officer, Professor Chris Whitty, he said that it is far more damaging for a child's development and their health to be away from school any longer. So how safe can schools be and has the R rate lowered enough? Well, let's catch up with Dr Duncan Robertson from Loughborough University School of Business and Economics, our guide through the whole thing. Duncan, hi. Morning, Ben. Hi. Look, first of all, look, first of all then, where are we with the R rate at the moment? That's, that's always been the crucial bit. And obviously, with, with more of the, the measures sort of being lifted, has it altered at all? Well, I think the, there was a there was a new estimate of the R number that came out um, uh, last week, and it's basically saying it's somewhere between 0.9 and 1.1. And if we sort of remember, if it's over one, then the epidemic is growing, and if it's under, it's generally um, reducing. So, I think Sage, which is this government committee, um, scientific committee that has said they can't rely on it being under one, so there's a chance that it is over one. And uh, yeah, it seems to be rising in terms of cases. Um, so yeah, I think um, some of the some of the uh, measures that have been released are obviously potentially having an increase in the incidence. That was always going to be the risk, though, wasn't it? That's right, and I think um, you know there, there's obviously what's going on now is this balance between risk and uh, you know benefits from things like schools and pubs, and there's uh, a judgment being made about what's um, worthwhile. So absolutely, and I think what's interesting is these. It's not sort of increasing uniformly across the country. There are, you know, individual parts of, of counties and within counties or within towns within Leicester that uh, where it is rising. Um, and I think what the government is trying to do is to, rather than impose a blanket um, restrictions on the entire country, to make it, you know, it start off with Leicester, which was, um, you know, on the entire um, entire town, and then mm. I think what's going on now is they're making it more and more local, where they can see these outbreaks happening. It 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 it, it is would seem to be proving to be infuriatingly difficult, though. Even if you do lock somewhere down, the the, the you know those elements, it takes a long time. It's like trying to slow down an oil tanker. Well, exactly, that's right. There is this sort of inertia where you you know something will start up and it takes a long time to stop it, um, and I think that's. You know, what, what is happening now is that it's taking a long time. Say in Leicester, it's still bumbling along, along this 50 or 60 uh, cases per 100,000. And so, you know, it's taking a long time to slow down. And I think another thing that the government is trying to do is to try and work out what this R number is and get a more accurate estimate. estimate, estimate. Mm. Um, because uh, what's happened is, for example, in the case of Leicester, you know, there's a spike that's detected in numbers of cases, and then all the resources are sent in to increase testing, which then increases the number of cases detected. So what the government's trying to do is to have some more um, samples tests from around the country. So taking a representative sample of people and this ONS Office for National Statistics survey is being increased so they can get a better estimate of the um, incident around the country. Talk to me about schools reopening then, because, I mean, you only have to look into any supermarket to see that the back-to-school stuff is in full swing, you know, trousers and shoes and all the station, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've been stocking up for for our uh, our younger son, who's going back to school imminently. Um, w- w- what are the implications for that? Well, I think, you know, as you mentioned in the introduction, the chief medical officer is, is saying that, you know, that the risk to a child getting it and having adverse effects is is very low it's almost negligible so that's good and i think the the issue comes when everything else opens up as a result of that so you know parents might congregate at schools they might go for coffee uh you know they may interact in a way that actually increases the rate over and above just the schools happening and so what's happening in cases like in countries in states like florida is you've got an increase in the lower population and then it starts to lower age population and it starts to spread up through the age groups so you know that's an obvious risk of uh, this strategy and and how long will i mean it, it, it is it as with everything it's a, what, a sort of a couple of weeks that we'll know whether there's been an effect or not or slightly longer well you know public health england um are still are carrying out these surveys and once they detect um a outbreak in a in a school uh, they then go in and then will monitor that. And then you can then see the number of outbreaks that happen in schools increasing or not 
Um, and so you'll be able to report back you know, within a week or two of schools reopening. So the government should be aware of what's happening in schools. And I think what's, what's interesting is the government has said, actually, some of these outbreaks have been mainly through teachers uh, transmitting rather than the mm. children. But, of course, you know, what's happened is there haven't been a lot of people back at school. So potentially when you get you know, the full um, cohort going back at the same time, that has the potential to increase it. But we shall see. And just just finally, you, we've talked about the, 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 the number of cases and so on, but how many of those are, are then going on to be hospitalised? Because that seems to be throwing up something quite interesting, either that that um, people who are more vulnerable are still, if not self-isolating, then taking social distancing incredibly seriously, and those that are showing up positive are younger. Is that... Is that, that, that can we make that, that assumption? That's fair, yeah, exactly. So um, what you find is, people, is young children may not... Uh, have symptoms at all so you may not know they've got them um, but then of course what happens is they may be transmitting to each other or not but generally in the sort of 20 year old sort of you know universities for example when they go back mm. there may be transmission in that group which doesn't really affect many people but then of course it can spread up through the population in terms of ages so that's kind of what's been happening in florida and uh, look, you're obviously no doubt anxiously awaiting the return of students in the next month or two at Loughborough University. I think there's lots of uh, mitigation measures going in to try to stop any spread in, on the university, isn't there? Exactly. And that's, I think, what um, you know, all responsible organisations will be doing. They'll be putting in these mitigation measures. So to try and reduce the risk as much as, um, as much as you can, because obviously when people gather, there is a risk. And, you know, what the government has said we need to do is to mitigate that risk and to prevent that spread as much as we can. OK, Duncan, great to talk to you. Speak to you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks ever so much. There we are, Dr. Dr. Duncan Robertson uh, from Loughborough University joining us here on uh, BBC Radio Leicester.